I lost my mother in 2017 to Huntington's disease. She was diagnosed when she was about 35. She was only 49 when she passed, so she struggled with the disease for about 14 years. Her and her sister both had Huntington's disease and they inherited it from their father. One of the tricky parts of it was that their father had passed away when he was about 31 or 32. So nobody knew that he had the disease. There was a lot of misinformation in my family about Huntington's disease because there was something that affected the women on my grandfather's side of the family, but nobody really knew what it was. But there was just this disease that all the women got. You know, thinking about him being a man, everybody thought, you know, he's probably fine, but nobody really did. Him and my grandmother had three children, my uncle, and my, my aunt, and my mother. My uncle is negative for the disease, but my aunt and my mother both, both ended up getting pregnant. You know, it was, it was definitely a stressful time in my life not only before my mother was diagnosed, absolutely afterwards, but, but during the time before she was diagnosed, her behavior started changing, and it was very difficult to understand why she was doing the things that she was doing or why she was acting the way that she was acting, and we had no explanation. When I started learning about the disease and, and getting more information, I started putting pieces together, and, and I remember when she called me and, and told me about her diagnosis. I was a freshman in college. I was at the school library, and and she called me and she said, Anthony, I tested positive. After that, of course, the disease progressed through the symptoms that I had mentioned before. So the disease started with mood disorders, then my mother's chorea started to develop, and then she started developing psychological symptoms. It was a relatively slow progression, which eventually brought her to a nursing home where she needed 24-hour care. She lived in a nursing home for about five years, which is, is you know, a lot of stress for someone. Not only for her, but my grandmother had to deal with losing both of her daughters to the disease. My grandmother did her best to provide care and support them as much as she could. And that's really, you know, I feel blessed because that's one of the reasons that I, I could go to college and I could get an education and not be focused on, on providing care for my mother to because of my grandmother. Because the disease is hereditary though, you know, if you think about my grandmother's experience, she had two daughters who both had Huntington's disease. They had several children between them. And if you think about the probability, the flip of a coin, you know, as I mentioned earlier, it affects generation after generation. You end up with this, this period of, of sort of calm. But because of the number of grandchildren that my grandmother has and the risk that we all carry for having the disease, it's almost a certainty that one of her grandchildren will also get Huntington's disease. So not only did she have to go through losing her two daughters, but now she has to sit around and wait to see which grandchild is affected by the disease. You know, I've, in the past I've described Huntington's disease as a ticking time bomb. You don't know if it's going to go off. You don't know when it's going to go off. You don't know how big the explosion is going to be. And as a consequence of that, people who are at risk suffer in their daily lives from, I would say, deep paranoia. Every forgotten appointment, every twitch, every movement, anything. You, you stumble when you're walking down the sidewalk, things that everybody goes through. It makes you think, could that be me? Could that be a symptom? What do I have to do now? What do I have to think about now? And it makes people really afraid for their families and really afraid in general. And as a consequence, there's this shadow that sort of hangs over people who are at risk and families that are affected by Huntington's disease. You know, it's always with you. We all learn to cope with it in some way, but you know, it's, it's, it's one of the core missions of our organization is to provide the community to people so that they know that if something did happen to them, they wouldn't be alone and that their families would have people to support them. So yeah, my personal experience can be a little challenging to talk about. I lost my father during the, during a time where I probably needed him, which is about as, the most I ever needed him in my life, which was my, my younger 20s as I was becoming a man, that's when I actually lost my father. If you want to rewind a little bit, I actually never got a chance to meet my grandfather, which I was really sad as a child of. He, he had Huntington's and he passed before I could ever really get to know him. I do have like a distant memory of him on the side of his bed before he passed, but that was that was all I ever, he could talk to me. Early 20s, I lost my father. He was diagnosed when he was 40 years old. I'm now 40 years old, so it, it's, it's, it's a, some days are harder than others, but 40, he was diagnosed, he progressed fairly quickly. 
he passed March 10th, 2004, 47 years old. So the disease only took about seven years. And although through those seven years, I watched my father become a hard worker, a great man. He was, he was, everyone loved him. He was great. I saw him slowly progress mentally, just forgetting things. I know that he lost his balance a lot. Mobility was affected uh, very quickly in his progression. Over time, you know, he was, he was uh, sleeping a lot, a lot of mood swings. It's what we call the Huntington's career. It was really bad. His mom's the Parkinson side of it uh, moved quite a bit. After four or five years, he couldn't use his legs anymore. He was in a wheelchair. Eventually, he was in a home. And then the day came and my mother called me. I still remember where I was. I remember every detail of it. She called me and said, my father passed. You know, Huntington's took my father, took my grandfather. Because the disease is generational, I have a 50-50 chance of getting that disease as well. I've chosen not to get tested at this point. I'm going to live my life to the fullest that I possibly can. But my brother and I both were at that stage in our lives where he has not gotten tested yet either. So then I live every single day, everything saying every day is a blessing. Oh, it's, every day is a new day for us. We have both two children, so we're worried about our own lives and passing it on to my children as well. So my name is Anthony Martinez. I'm the president of events for the North Carolina chapter of the Huntington's Disease Society of America. I got involved with HDSA several years ago when I was in grad school in Chicago. I got involved with the Illinois chapter, helping them find fundraisers and volunteers. After moving down to North Carolina, I actually got involved with the North Carolina chapter. They were going through some changes and they were looking for additional people to come onto the board to support the organization moving forward. So I originally came on as just a volunteer that would organize events. And then after about a year of participation, I stepped up into the president of events role, uh, hoping to take what I had learned in my professional life and, and help professionalize the organization and take it to the next step. Huntington's disease is a rare neurodegenerative disease that's passed from parent to child 50% of the time. The reason for that is that it's an autosomal dominant trait. So, you know, regardless of race or gender, every parent that has Huntington's disease has the flip of a coin to give it to one of their children. The disease is caused by a mutation in the Huntington gene, which results in protein machinery that's typically coming in to correct mutations, accidentally putting too many things called CAG repeats in place of where this mutation is. That leads to something called a polyglutamine tract expansion. So what you end up having is glutamines, an amino acid in the protein, stacked next to each other. Once the number of glutamines gets to be too many, say 35 or, or above, the protein actually can't fold in the way that it's supposed to. And what happens is it starts to stick together, sort of like plaque, sort of like a symptom of Alzheimer's disease. What this does is it leads to neuronal death in the brain, and the symptoms really start to show when you're in your 30s. Recently, there was a test that was developed to test the gene to see how many CAG repeats you have and whether or not you're going to have this polyglutamine tract expansion. But this test is relatively new. So for a lot of people, they didn't know that they were at risk. They didn't know they had Huntington's disease. And because the symptoms start when they're in their 30s, people would often have children or grandchildren by the time that they would find out that they had the disease. What that results in is the disease being passed from generation to generation, wreaking havoc on a family over many decades. So it's a rare disease, but it affects families year after year after year. It really beats them down over and over and over. You know, and often what will happen is a family will go through this horrible experience, you know, they'll lose a loved one, but then a decade later, somebody else in the family will get affected by the disease. So disease progression really happens in three phases. So it starts with mood disorders, development of OCD, irrational behavior, mood swings. Somebody's behavior will start to change and it doesn't change it enough for people to be necessarily worried, but it's enough to cause a lot more tension and conflict in their lives. Then the disease progresses to physical symptoms, chorea. It used to be called Huntington's chorea, before it was called Huntington's disease. 
It's erratic, jerky movements similar to Parkinson's disease. Following that set of symptoms, then you start having psychological symptoms. The development of deep dementia and, and you start to become very forgetful and, and irrational towards your, your friends and family. People who are somewhat loving or caring, they completely change. And they become, I would say, scary, scarier. They seek conflict. So once it comes out of the physical symptoms, you start to develop psychological symptoms like dementia. This is when it starts seeming like Alzheimer's disease. So all three of these sets of symptoms start to act together. Eventually a person will require 24 hour care and the disease is a terminal illness. So eventually this will lead to complications in other parts of your life, pneumonia and things like that, which will eventually take some control. So in North Carolina, we have you know, multiple goals. So one of our goals is to fundraise to raise funds that can go to support research to find a cure, but also to provide care and support to families that are affected by the disease. Our second mission, which is no less important, is to build a community around people affected by the disease. Whether it's somebody who has the disease, caretakers or caregivers, it could be friends or, or people who have lost people in the past, you know, somebody who is touched by the disease at all. You know, it's a rare disease and as a consequence, people find themselves often isolated. They think that they're alone, and we find that unacceptable. We want people to know that they are part of a family, they're part of a community, and we have their backs. So typically, we, we plan a series of events you know, every year. We do an education day, we do wraparound events, and sort of community and family events, a bowl of fun, you know, events at local breweries. For the remainder of the year, so we have two big events coming up. So on October 20th, we have a relatively large event in Raleigh at Dual Plus Piano Bar. It's going to be from six o'clock to nine o'clock and the bar is actually closed down for this event specifically. We're really excited because not only are we going to have a raffle, but we're going to have a silent auction and all the proceeds from that night are going to go to support the Huntington's Disease Society of America's mission. Some of these items include park hopper passes for Disney World. We have a lunchbox signed by ton of NASCAR drivers. But yeah, we're really excited. We have a ton of items for that, for that event. We also have on October 27th, our largest event of the year. It's the Triad Team Hope Walk at Grimsley High School in Greensboro, North Carolina. That event's gonna run from two o'clock to four o'clock p.m. And we're really excited about this event because it's not really a fundraising event, but it's an opportunity for us to celebrate the community. So being so close to Halloween, we're inviting people to come out in costume. We're gonna have pumpkin carving, face painting, food, for everybody. So not only will it be a walk to show solidarity within the community, but it'll be an opportunity for families to come together, meet each other, and have fun and, and forget about all the you know, struggles that they've gone through in the past. The motto of HDSA is family is everything. And we believe that. It's a hereditary disease. So if we go far enough back, we're family. It all started from one person and branched down to us. So you know, we all have a little bit of each other in us. The mission of the Huntington's Disease Society of America is to improve the lives of everyone with Huntington's disease and their families. The organization was started by Woody Guthrie's wife, Marjorie Guthrie. A lot of people don't realize this, but Woody Guthrie actually had Huntington's disease. And when Marjorie lost her husband, she knew that she needed to do something to improve the lives of everybody else that was affected. My name is Clinton Tierney, and I'm the president of the Huntington's Disease Society of America on sponsorship. I've been with the board for two years now. I actually went to one of our wraparound events two years ago and I met the other president, Anthony Martinez. At the time, we didn't even know that any association even existed. So it was a great eye opener for me and my family. That's when we started becoming much more involved with all the wraparound events and then it kind of progressed from there. So Huntington's disease is a hereditary fatal neurological disease. It is a rare disease because it just fits in certain families and it affects them from generation to generation. It is hereditary, like I said, it is also fatal. Right now there is no cure for Huntington's disease. So every dollar that is donated to the Huntington's Disease Society of America is split up between research and caring for existing families. It is a national association. We are specifically just for the North Carolina chapter. Our wraparound events bring money into the national account and then we can take care of, again, both 
people that have it in existing and in the research department. So one of our biggest missions in the chapter is really just to raise awareness. I didn't even know that this association had existed. But with, with Huntington's disease, there seems to be a shadow that oversees the family. They don't like to talk about it. I think that the, the disease itself, which is a collaboration of the symptoms are of ALS, Parkinson's, and Alzheimer's. And each one of those in their own right is a terrible disease. So you can only imagine how destructive it can be to a family when a certain individual, a loved individual, can have all three. Um, so people don't really like to talk about it because it's hard. And also, because it's a hereditary disease, someone like myself, where my father passed of it, I didn't like to talk about it. We just didn't really talk about it much in the family at all. Because one, I didn't like to talk about what my father went through. So the disease itself starts, it's got most people between the ages of 30 and 50 years old during their prime working years. It's fairly recent that we can test for the disease and actually find out whether someone tests positive or negative. And in fact, the results can kind of guide you whether you're gonna be in that 30 or that 40 or that 50 um, mark range. Up until the last couple generations, people thought that they had ALS or Parkinson's, Alzheimer's, they didn't know what Huntington's was, and some of them were dying before they could technically be diagnosed with Huntington's, and it was going down from generation to generation, and people didn't know that it was running in the families. So the next two wraparound events that we're gonna be doing to finish out the rest of our year, on October 20th, which is the Sunday, the Dual Plus Piano Bar in downtown Raleigh is gonna open up their doors just for this specific event from 6 to 9 p.m. Anybody and everyone is invited. We're gonna have a lot of raffles. It's gonna be a great event. All of the proceeds, which are tips to the bartenders, tips on food, tips to the piano players, and the $5 admission, all go towards the charity. So that's one really big event that we're super excited about. Second one is our big event of the year. From two o'clock to four o'clock p.m., October 27th, which is Sunday at Grimsley High School in Greensboro, North Carolina. This event is our biggest event of the year. There's gonna be hundreds of people all affiliated some way or another, whether they have the disease, a family disease, or they're friends of a family through the disease. This is all one big event of the year to say, you're not alone. This is a family disease, but you are not alone. We are gonna to come together as a family. We're gonna show each other support. We're gonna talk and celebrate the lives of ones we've passed. The Raleigh event is really exciting because we've done a ton of sponsorship within the local communities. And we have probably 30 or 40 local companies have donated either their services or their products. We're gonna be raffling off that. We're gonna also do a silent auction. We've got a week long park pass trip to Disney that we're gonna be auctioning off in the silent auction. We've got Angus Farm. We also have a signed autograph of The Catch by Dwight Clark, who had passed from ALS. So his family had donated a signed autograph of that picture. So we're really excited for that. So 49ers fans, come on out. <laughs>